Now, what I would call a really swinging human being is a person who lives on two levels at once. He's able to live on the level of being his ordinary ego, his everyday personality, and play his role in life and to observe all the rules and so on that go with that. But if he's only on that level, if he's only playing that kind of thing, then he starts being the kind of person who feels that he's just got to go on surviving. See? It's terribly important to go on surviving. And so nobody really has any fun. So hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to bring you something very exciting indeed. Finally we are here with the first episode of the F1 2017 career mode here with Scuderia. Toro Rosso, it's been it's been a long time coming. Seemingly everybody in their mum has got the game early this year, but unfortunately I was unable to start this career mode until today. You guys I'm sure will have been entertained by the likes of Arav, Cal, Tom, etc. who got the game early. Hopefully I can now have the bat on for a little bit and entertain you guys as well. As I mentioned, we're gonna be starting with Toro Rosso. You might have seen the teaser trailer on the channel previously, my latest video, and also I hope you enjoyed that intro. It took quite a lot of time and editing as I'm sure you can imagine. So if you did enjoy that, then make sure to slap a like on the video and subscribe, of course, for more F1 2017 content coming very, very soon, hopefully daily for at least a little bit. Now, when it comes to this game, obviously, there's a lot of new additions, talking about cutscenes, etc., the R&D tree. We'll get onto that stuff in a moment. When it comes to the cutscenes, I'm not going to lie, I am going to talk over these ones because, realistically, you will have seen them from other people's channels by now, and I don't want to take up, I don't want to clog up too much time in this video with cutscenes scenes that you've already seen. Obviously in the background you can see Emma Jenkins, she is basically our agent and she sorted us a contract out with Toro Rosso. We're obviously going to be a second driver and you can see the contract details in the background with a second driver alongside the Spaniard Carlos Sainz. We are going to be replacing Daniel Kafiat and we will not be partnering up with the Russian. We'll be taking on Carlos Sainz who of course we did a career mode with back on F1 2015. So there's some nostalgia for you. But regardless of that, we're starting to look at some of the new stuff and this is the vehicle management. So the engine management, power unit management, and of course the gearbox management as well. We are only allowed four gearboxes and four parts of each engine part across the entire season. Engine wear and engine management is of course a new feature for F1 2017 and it is really going to change the way we do races really because you've now got to look after the, the, you know, the components. Obviously you don't want a, a part to fail during the season at any point really because you're not going to be scoring any points. So it is going to be a very difficult thing to manage but also one that I'm looking forward to, a challenge that I'm looking forward to. We'll have to see whether the Toro Rosso is kind of least on its part. But now getting into practice and looking at the practice programs, there's some new ones this year but we're starting off with one that was on F1 2016 as well and that of course is track acclimatization and we smashed it out of the park. I'm not going to lie, we got a ridiculous score getting the full 50 resource points. Obviously for those that don't know, if you're new to the F1 franchise you get resource points by how well you do in these practice programs that sort of are based around various things to do with tyre, conservation, fuel saving etc and then the amount of resource points you get can then be spent on upgrading your car. 
because that's basically how the system works and the, the better you do in each practice program the more resource points you get on the tire management one we got 30 resource points so we got sort of like an average score um, I'm gonna take that because I'm terrible at tire management realistically but on fuel saving we managed to get the purple score which means we get 50 resource points which is very very good indeed so we're already looking at 130 resource points so far in this one practice session alone so obviously Albert Park in Australia Melbourne is of course the scene for the first round of the season and generally speaking it is a track that I quite enjoy racing on so we'll be hoping for a good weekend and hopefully this good practice session will set us up in good stead for that realistically uh, moving on now to some of the other practice programs you can see in the background I think this is the race strategy one I believe this is a new one there just uh, losing the back end going through the penultimate corner now running the final corner we're up on our delta by 1.3 seconds going across for the third lap I think this one is the race strategy one yes it is indeed the race strategy program basically you've just got to set like three consistently quick lap times in a row on a set of the uh, slightly harder compound and then qualifying pace of course on the new ultra soft tires uh, getting really held up by Valtteri Bottas the dirty air off the back of that Mercedes was really throwing us out wide through the final two corners we did manage to still beat the objective and also take 50 resource points there and you can see in the background we get 250 out of the possible 275 resource points across that session now if you're wondering about the AI difficulty I'm running it is 95 which I think is legend um, I've seen the likes of Hayden and Joe have also been running that difficulty if you don't know who they are links to their channels will be in the description they're also doing career modes as well now though it is R&D o'clock ladies and gentlemen and this is our R&D man it's the same guy as last year uh, realistically but we've now got this new setup we've now got the paddock if you like and this is an interesting thing because I think this is definitely Codemasters setting themselves up for a paddock like we had in F1 2010 now that we've got these cutscenes and sort of situations in various areas of the F1 paddock I feel like that's what they're setting themselves up for nevertheless though you saw our R&D guy there we're going to look at upgrades realistically in next episode right at the start of next episode and hopefully we'll have some upgrades for China you can see our qualifying goal is to finish 13th and to beat Carlos Sainz we'll see if we can do that now in the qualifying report The first qualifying session of the 2017 season got underway in damp conditions as the new look Formula 1 cars took to the Albert Park track. Sebastian Vettel was fastest ahead of teammate Kimi Raikkonen as Mercedes struggled to keep pace. Meanwhile a mistake for Toro Rosso debutant Yusufu ruled him out of Q2. The rain showed no signs of relenting in Saturday's second session as Lewis Hamilton led a Mercedes response. Kevin Magnussen showed good pace for Haas to make it into the shootout at the expense of Canadian new boy Lance Stroll in the Williams. But in Q3 it would be Sebastian Vettel once again fastest for the Scuderia with Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton two tenths behind. Felipe Massa and Esteban Ocon impressed in 5th and 7th respectively, whilst the spin for Max Verstappen means he will start only 10th on the grid for the race on Sunday. So it will be Sebastian Vettel who starts the 2017 season as the first pole sitter in the Luluk Formula 1 era, sharing the front row of the grid with the Brit Lewis Hamilton. It's all Mercedes and Ferrari at second row as well with Bottas and Raikkonen in third and fourth respectively. Whilst Felipe Massa impressed in the Williams to take fifth ahead of the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo, Esteban Ocon also managed to beat his teammate Sergio Perez to take P7 for Force India. Kevin Magnussen took a very impressive eighth place for Haas, with Carl Carlos Sainz beating the bigger brother Red Bull of Max Verstappen to P9, Lance Stroll and Jolian Palmer round out the top 12 for the Australian Grand Prix grid. So 16th on the grid only in the Toro Rosso on our Formula 1 debut on a Saturday is a bit of a shame. We could have made it into Q2 easily, I'm not going to lie, but that mistake really, really costing us in Q1. And it is a bit of a shame because we could have at least given Carlos Sainz a little bit of a run for his money, although of course he made it into Q3 in the end, so maybe we wouldn't have done. It's also, hurt, it's also harmed even or hurt our reputation level with some of the teams around us, but hopefully we'll be able to build that up now in the race. At least it might mean we've got a bit more overtaking to do in the race though given these new cars the, the higher downforce it is a lot harder to overtake cars obviously in real life and on this game as well slipstream has been massively nerfed if you like the uh, the slipstream is is very poor these days on f1 games so we'll have to see how difficult or how easy it's going to be to overtake people now we're going to go for a one-stop strategy in this race obviously the fact that it was an intermediate session in qualifying means that basically everyone can start on whatever tire they want to 
given it's going to be dry in this race and dry all the way through. So most people are probably going to start on the softs or super softs. You probably won't be getting anyone at all trying a two-stop strategy, maybe one or two, but I severely doubt it as the one-stop is clearly the superior strategy. So unfortunately, we don't have much of an advantage on the guys at the bottom end of the top 10, but it is still going to be... A bit of a, a bit of an advantage on the likes of Grosjean to our left, who's starting on the harder soft compound, if that makes any sense at all. But we're starting 16th on the grid. The lights are starting to illuminate for the first round of our F1 2017 career mode, and we are underway. The lights are now out, and it is go for round number one here in Australia, and it's a good launch off the line. We're boxed in a little bit, because Grosjean's got a good start. Hulkenberg to the inside as well. We're going to try and go up the inside of a Haas car. The Frenchman there among Grosjean. We get around the outside, going through turn two, getting the power down. We're still alongside the Frenchman though he's still got his front right up the inside of us if you like but it's going to turn to the outside as we now go into turn three down the inside now of Hulkenberg Sergio Perez as well in the force India is now to our outside we're going to try and swoop around the outside down into turn four and we just about chop his nose off but it sends us a little bit wide and out over the rumble strip the man another man making his debut today Lance Stroll is just ahead of us now in the Williams but up to P13 so three places gained on the first lap already. Very good start. We passed Grosjean, Hulkenberg and Sergio Perez then on this first lap already. And this is the kind of level of progress that we really need to maintain because obviously we're on the super soft tyres. We need to make them work whilst we can because some of the guys, the likes of Lance Stroll, um, I think Roman Grosjean, his teammate um, Kevin Magnussen as well, are all starting on the soft tyres. So they're going to be quicker at the end of the race. In the second half of the race, they're going to be quicker. So we need to take advantage of the fact that we are now on softer tyres. And speaking of the softer compound, we've got our teammate here Carlos Sainz who's also starting on them and making them work off the line with a beautiful launch passing one of the Haas cars and Max Verstappen straight off the line and then going round the outside of Esteban Ocon uh, sorry it wasn't even Verstappen it was Daniel Ricciardo so a ridiculous start from Carlos Sainz and up into P6 for our Spanish teammate but obviously that's that's good for the team but it's not good for us because he's now really just trouncing us in the race overall but good starts for uh, both the Toro Rosso cars here, us making up three places, and Carlos Sainz as well. And we're looking to make it four now, because we're all over the back end of the Canadian Lance Stroll in the Williams. He's looking a little bit shaky on his Formula 1 debut, is the 18-year-old. We're going to try and go round the outside of him, down into turn three, forces a little bit out wide. And he has to turn out the corner and get a massive snap of oversteer halfway through and on the exit. And Lance Stroll does just about survive for now. We're not going to be able to make the move on him just yet. But uh, he is going slowly, and we need to overtake him because we've got a very, very quick Sergio Perez behind us now in the Force India, who's really out of position. His teammate Esteban Ocon is up in P7 or P8 at the moment, so Sergio Perez is massively out of position. So we need to dispatch Lance Stroll very quickly if we're going to get away from Sergio Perez, and that is our opportunity because the Canadian, under pressure on his Formula 1 debut, locks up there down into that right hand and we sneak up the inside very opportunistic move and we are up now into p12 we've got some yellow flags up ahead of us as well on the mini map it's carnage in the first two laps of the race man off to the left hand side and it's our teammate carlos Sainz in the Toro rosso and that amazing start that he had where he's gained three places is it's led to nothing it's led to his race going up in smoke and we'll have to wait and see what's happened, whether it's an incident or it looked like a mechanical failure, to be honest with you, where he was parked. We'll see a replay now. I'm going through the quick chicane, and yet yeah, the engine gives up on him, and that's not a good sign. Honestly, that's quite unnerving. That's quite unsettling to see on lap number two, our teammate in the exact same car as us breaking down already with an engine failure. And uh, that is not good. That is not good to see. So Carlos Sainz is out of the Grand Prix. We're not going to be getting any sort of double scoring points at all or double point scoring finish whatsoever, which is a bit of a shame. Obviously, we need to get into the points first. But regardless of that, there's action going on up and down the field at the moment. And towards the top end of the field, we've got Valtteri Bottas battling his fellow countryman, Kimi Raikkonen, who's made a very nice move here. Round the outside, bit of a snap of oversteer for Bottas, losing the back end. And Kimi Raikkonen is now up into P3 after passing the Mercedes driver there. And Honestly, that was a very nice move. Sort of fainted to the outside, went to the inside, and then made it work around the outside in the end. And speaking of moves around the outside, Sergio Perez has now dispatched Lance Stroll. This is exactly why we needed to pass the Canadian as well, because Sergio Perez is absolutely flying on those super softs, and he's just... That was a ridiculous move. Very, very very tight move around the outside going through one of the quickest corners on the track we've now set our sights on some points though and look who it is Jolian Palmer having a good race in the Renault up in P10 at the moment the man very much known for finishing 11th well he's beating 11th by one position currently because he's actually up in a championship scoring position championship point scoring position up in P10 
It's only one point in, in fairness, but it's still decent as that Renault up in front of us sparks away now coming through this quick left and right chicane. And we're getting now into the slipstream of Julian Palmer. We've actually got a great run there out of that quick chicane. And we're going to look up the inside of the brick. We're going to have to lunge because it's so difficult to make overtakes. It gets very close between ourselves and Julian Palmer. We've got the inside now going through this mid-speed right-hander. And on the third to last corner of the track... We complete the move on Jolian Palmer, on our fellow countryman, and up into P10 we go, ahead of the Renault driver, who interestingly is on the same compound of tyre as us as well, so that's just outright better pace than the Renault driver. Um, despite the Renault actually being better in the scheme of things than the Toro Rosso, the Renault has better performance on the R&D tree than the Toro Rosso, so good to see that we're competing and beating the likes of those guys. We've actually got yellow flags behind us here as we've gone to lap 8 of this 29 lap race. 50% distance, of course, is the distance, and oh, it's the man we've just overtaken. Jolian Palmer is out of the race, and he's brought out the VSC, the virtual safety car. Actually, it took me a second to realise and slow down that the virtual safety car had even come out in the first place, and that I was over the delta. We do slow down in the end, and we'll uh, sort of meet the requirements of that lap time delta. We'll see a replay now and see what actually happened to Jolian Palmer. Is it going to be a similar situation? He's got Sergio Perez behind us, who's seemingly been following us through this uh, through this field, if you like, and now he's following us. Uh, he's now following a plume of smoke because Jolian. Palmer's Renault engine has given up on him and that's a bit worrying for Renault generally because it's I'm pretty sure Toro Rosso have Renault power units we've seen Carlos Sainz's power unit go up in smoke earlier and now the works team Julian Palmer he is out of the race as well big shame for him 18 runners and riders now left in this Grand Prix but I don't think the VSC will have changed too much in terms of this race not many people wanting to pit although we've got Sergio Perez coming in at the moment and this is actually to serve a drive-through penalty Sergio Perez has been given a drive-through penalty for speeding under the virtual safety car. That is an absolute disaster for the Force India driver. The virtual safety car didn't really change much in terms of strategy because even the runners on the Super Softs wouldn't have been pitting that early in the race. So it hasn't really changed tyre strategy, but it has in very much drastically changed Sergio Perez's race. A stupid mistake from him, clearly not staying under the Delta, and he's dropped from P11 down to P17 behind Pascal Verline. So a big, big mistake from Sergio Perez. He's seen... He's just dropped down the order behind Romain Grosjean. Big, big issues for the Mexican driver. On to lap number 10, though, now. We've got Max Verstappen ahead of us. He had a very poor qualifying, did the Dutchman in the Red Bull. He qualified down in P10 after a mistake, after a spin in that intermediate qualifying session. But he's working his way back up the order by passing the Dane Kevin Magnussen there. Great move around the outside of the Haas driver, but it slowed them both down. We've now managed to catch up to both of them. Uh, Magnussen and Verstappen are both on the soft tyres, so we have a bit of a compound advantage on both of them. But obviously they're then going to be quicker in the second half of the race. So if we can try and latch onto the back end of Magnussen and potentially make a move on the Dane, that would be good. Uh, Roman Grosjean, uh, Magnussen's teammate, is also behind us, so we're in a bit of a hard sandwich, but you've seen the notification there at the top right of the screen, or at the top right of the screen, the top of the screen. They're falling like flies in this race. Lewis Hamilton is now out of the Grand Prix as well, from P2, I believe. I think he was actually second in the race at the time, and Lewis Hamilton, the Brit, has got off to a shocking start in his hopes of winning the title here in this 2017 season as his Mercedes gives up on him. You'll see him there on the side of the track as myself and Magnussen drive through the scene of the accident and let's see what happened then to Lewis Hamilton. He's being chased down by Kimi Raikkonen. It's Seb Vettel who's leading the race, but although I think he's on a two-stop and it's not even an engine blowout. It must be some sort of gearbox issue or maybe just some sort of lack of power from maybe a, a failure in the MG UK or MGUH, but a massive issue for Lewis Hamilton. It is terminal and he is out of this Grand Prix. It's a shocking start to the season for Lewis Hamilton and his rivals will be licking their lips at the opportunity now of gaining points on the Brit. Moving on to lap 12, this is the lap before we were meant to come in, but our tyres are starting to drop off now. These super softs, you can see actually we were losing time to Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, so that would indicate that it is basically time to come in. A little bit tentative, if I'm honest, in coming into the pit lane, but it's the first pit stop I've done on this game, just straight up, so I was always going to be a bit tentative, don't want to get a drive through, that would completely ruin our opportunity or chance of getting points as you saw from Sergio Perez uh, earlier, really nice sort of camera angle there for the pit stop, you can see we're going to drop down the order, Sergio Perez has actually gone through interestingly enough, we were just mentioning him in the Force India, he hasn't actually made a pit stop though, 
he's just had a drive-through penalty, obviously, so he needs to pit again. So it's not like we're behind him in a net sort of order, if you like. But Pascal Verlein is the man behind us there in the Sauber, so we've just got out ahead of him. And uh, one lap later, and these softs are feeling good. The, the grip on these soft tyres, having just come out of the tyre blankets, is high. I'm not going to lie to you. We've got people peeling into the pit lane now. Sergio Perez there, Marcus Eriksson and Fernando Alonso all nicely getting out of the way before we catch up to them, which is uh, nice. It has to be said, and the, the next lap, Stoffel van Dorn does exactly the same. He peels into the pit lane there in the McLaren before we can catch him and get held up by the Belgian. And uh, we are now up into P number 12. Esteban Ocon has just come out of the pit lane as well in the Force India, and you can see his dot there on the mini-map. We are a lot closer to him than we were before we, before we made the pit stop. We're a solid four or five seconds closer to him, so this is working pretty well so far, this undercut. We've got yellow flags, though, out here, again, at the chicane where Carlos Sainz retired earlier, but this time it's not a retirement, it's a crash, and it's Kevin Magnussen and Max Verstappen, two of the men we were battling with earlier in the race, especially Kevin Magnussen, and they are off to the side of the track. They've had an accident together. This is what's happened. Nice aerial shot of Max Verstappen, who's not even battling with Kevin Magnussen, so how he's ended up in an incident with the Dane... He's literally beyond me. This is Valtteri Bottas trying to make a move, I think, on Max Verstappen. He goes to the inside. Yes, it is. Oh, it's got to be Bottas because Hamilton's out. There's contact between them. Verstappen spins off and into the wall. And that is a massive collision with the tyre barrier. Comes back onto the track, just parks it in the middle of the racing line. And that is where Kevin Magnussen smashes into him. Uh, his front wing comes off, debris everywhere, which Rohan Grosjean drives over. He'll be lucky not to have a puncture or a slow puncture from that one with a Haas driver. And Max Verstappen, here it is on board. That is a massive collision. He's lucky to even still be in the race, but it is just a general disaster for the Dutchman. And I mean, it's just a, such a stupid place to park. Although, having said that, with the yellow flags being out, Kevin Magnussen's got to be more aware of what's going on in front of him and instead of just pile driving into the car sat in the middle of the track. Meanwhile, on to lap 17, now lap 18, we've gained another position as the Williams driver of Lance Stroll comes in for a very late pit stop off his soft tyres, of course, hence he'll be running a little bit later on into the Grand Prix. He's now come in for the Super Softs, and we are gifted a position. And look at us now, we're up in P7, up in the lofty heights of 7th place. We've practically got a nosebleed. We're so high up the order because of Kevin Magnussen and uh, Max Verstappen's it was incident. We were behind both of them in terms of net position, so... We are, we, we, you know, we're up the order, we're rising up the order. We're actually catching Esteban Ocon, interestingly, in the Force India, but we can't use uh, rich fuel mixture anymore. And as you can see on the, on the right-hand side, you'll have seen a moment ago, the MG UK is heavily worn, and I think that is the part that is uh, worn when you use rich fuel mixture. And if I'm honest with you, I want my MG UK to last more than, I don't know, 2.7 races, and at this rate, it's probably not going to happen. So we've got to go down into standard, which is a bit of a frustration, really, because not only are we catching Esteban Ocon, and now we're not, we've also got to try and defend from the super soft shod uh, Roman Grosjean. He's trying to go around the outside of us. That's never going to happen through that chicane, though. So for now, we remain in this P7, but Roman Grosjean is significantly, significantly quicker even than us at the moment, naturally, given he's on the super soft, and we're only on the soft. So this is going to be, this is going to have to be a pretty decent and defensive drive in our first ever Formula 1 Grand Prix if we are to hold on to P number 7 here. Two laps of this race to go as we now go on to lap 28. Grosjean has the DRS. Not really seen much of the, of the drag reduction system in this Grand Prix so far. This is basically the first time we've needed to talk about it at all, but obviously there's a second bite of the cherry after turn number 2, and Grosjean is going to try and use that to his advantage to try and go around the outside now. He breaks late down into turn 3, but will squeeze into the edge of the track and onto the kerb, and that is an easy defensive move from ourselves to hold on now in front of the Frenchman. So P7 is still where we sit. At the moment, we've got a massive buffer back to the likes of P10. I mean, uh, points at this point, apart from a disaster, a breakdown, a puncture, or an incident, are guaranteed. Because, I mean, you can see Hulkenberg on the, on the mini-map. He's in P9. He's sort of about three seconds behind us, but... Apart from that, I don't know, I think, I think it might be Alonso in P10, he's a solid 20 seconds behind, so we've got a lot of time behind us, but Grosjean is still, is sort of, he's still planning a move on us as we now go into the chicane, but the right height seems a little bit weird here, his front left is off the ground, massive bit of oversteer, and Grosjean is slowing down, it's because he's got a puncture, he's got a rear right puncture on the Haas, and that is, oh, that is so gutting for the French when he's gone too deep into the next corner. I don't know if he realises he's got a puncture and he almost takes out the Renault of Nico Hulkenberg. That was so close to being an accident for the Renault driver as well and that would have been yet another incident in this Grand Prix. But Roman Grosjean, with just one lap to go, 
and that would have been such a good result for Haas as well. It, they've gone from potentially having a double point scoring finish to having no one finishing the points at all because Grosjean's now going to have to pit. He's going to drop out of the top 10. It is disaster for him. It's lucky for us because I think we would have had a, a tough job holding on in front of him. But meanwhile, away from all the carnage, lapping Fernando Alonso on the straight, Kimi Raikkonen comes across the line in the Ferrari to win. Uh, don't know what happens to Sebastian Vettel, but Kimi Raikkonen in the end eclipses his German teammate, Fernando Alonso, very cleverly um, making sure that he doesn't have to do an extra lap. Potentially wise, given that McLaren Honda can blow up at any possible opportunity. So I think it makes a lot of sense for him to want to do a lap less than everyone else just in case it blows up on the final lap. Uh, unlucky for Roman Grosjean that he didn't get the opportunity to pass us and now drops out of the points. But his loss realistically and Kevin Magnussen's loss is our gain because we're going to round the final corner with some pretty warm soft tyres to be honest with you after coming in two laps earlier than everyone else. But we come across the line to take P7 on our Formula 1 debut just ahead of the, Remo, uh, the Renault sorry, of Nico Hulkenberg who was starting to catch us there at the end. Very, very good result though overall on our debut. Well, that's a, that's a good haul of points. P7 is a very good result. We got lucky, to be honest with you, the likes of Hamilton retiring, uh, the incident between Verstappen and Magnussen, Grosjean with his puncture at the end. That could have been caused, to be honest with you, by running over that debris. I did mention it at the time that Grosjean ran over that debris uh, caused by the Verstappen-Magnussen incident. That could have been a slow puncture. I'm not entirely sure if he pitted at that point, but... It is a bit of a shame for Grosjean. Whatever the circumstance, he will lose out on points. Kimi Raikkonen, Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel, though, make up the top three. They make up the podium. And here are the full results. Kimi Raikkonen, in the end, wins the Grand Prix from fourth on the grid ahead of his fellow countryman, Valtteri Bottas. Sebastian Vettel goes from pole to third because he did a two-stop. That's the reason why he dropped down. He, for some reason, tried the two-stop. Uh, Ricardo Massa and Ocon. Great result for Ocon in this first race in the Force India for P6. We he comes 7th ahead of Hulkenberg, Stroll and Fernando Alonso rounding out the top 10 for McLaren. Grosjean and Magnussen as well as Verstappen all miss out on points due to their various incidents and then Van Dorn and Perez down in P15 after his drive through. Obviously the Drivers' Championship is going to be exactly the same because it's the full 25 points after one race for Kimi Raikkonen. Bottas 2nd, Vettel 3rd and of course obviously as I mentioned it's going to be exactly the same people. There's not going to be any surprises here don't worry. Uh, I'll show you the full standings when we get to the second Grand Prix. Here though with the constructor standings and Ferrari well they've got more than double the points of anyone else already after one Grand Prix they're on 40 Mercedes in second then Red Bull and Williams joint third and a Force India we find ourselves in sixth there for Toro Rosso with Renault and McLaren the only other teams to have scored points Haas and Sauber still waiting to get onto the board but a very very hectic first Grand Prix then of this career mode I mean the second stint for us wasn't massively exciting I suppose until obviously the battle with Grosjean but there was a lot of incidents and a lot of battles going on throughout the order so a really nice way to start this career mode and some good points as well gaining some resource points as well that we can now spend on upgrades and you'll see the upgrades that we've made we've already made them but you'll see that at the start of the next episode as well as an invitational event and the Chinese Grand Prix so it's gonna be a bumper packed episode is episode two so stick around for that one that'll be up soon a uh, rivalry update we are beating Carlos Sainz after his retirement bit of a shame actually for him because I think he could have scored some solid points given the issues for everybody else. Team approval, we've gone up after uh, beating our objective and beating Carlos Sainz and we've also got a little bit more reputation when it comes to some of the other teams around us. But that is basically it from me for this episode of F1 2017 Career Mode. I've been waiting a long time to say this. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, then slap a like on it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Let me know what else you'd like to see from F1 2017 content wise on this channel as well and I hope you, you guys like the fact that I'm back and making regular videos now on this channel but overall it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye Sometimes